Times Square, New York City. The heart of Broadway, it's always a busy area. Its giant billboards compete for everyone's attention. It's so full of lights and also so colorful and even if it's not if it's night you just think it's day because it's so lightful. Times Square good Times Square it's a good place to shop around and the lights and all that brightness, you know, that's about it. So, so if you were to look at the stars, can you see? No, I don't think so. <laughs> well, tall buildings and nobody really look, thinks of the stars once they come here. Can you see the stars from here? Oh, no, not really. Nothing like home. You walk outside and the stars are just perfect. But we do like the lights instead of the stars right now. At the stars? I don't see any stars at the moment. New York City's glittery nightlife shines all the way to outer space. But only a few miles away in Brooklyn, Irene, an amateur astronomer, walks her telescope searching for dark spots. She wants to avoid the city's bright lights because they cancel out the stars. This is very, very bright. There are floodlights that are lighting up the museum and then you have light reflected off the museum. There's lights going up literally up into the sky. I'm happy to show you some darker sites. There's actually a really dark site right nearby. I think it's an amazing contrast. To get a better look at the stars, Irene took us through the snowy paths of Prospect Park to show us the darkest patch of sky she has found in the neighborhood. We're getting a little bit of shimmering. Uh, if you want to take a look. When you're here in New York City, it's very difficult to see the sky because of all the light pollution. Linda embraced the idea of returning darker skies to New Yorkers. Her year-long efforts won a light pollution bill in December 2014. Linda's bill, which is now a law, requires that all state-funded buildings use shielded light fixtures for their new installations. So these kinds of um, fully shielded would focus the light down, contained within an area, and it would still be bright, but it would not be directed everywhere. So it'll make it easier to see. But it will also enhance our ability to see the night sky. Shielding some of the light fixtures could be a good start for addressing the city's light pollution problems. But some activists say there are other regulations that also need to be addressed. I'm what they refer to as a dark sky advocate. And I have been working on this issue for about the last uh, 15, almost 20 years. She took us on a ride around Manhattan to show us some examples of good and bad lighting. See, you know, these are drop lens fixtures. Well, these are shielded. And they're sort of that orange color, but the city's gonna start to change this sort of orange color to that blue makes it harder for people to see. So that's the second bill that we have to work on. Because the last thing you want to do is have a better fixture but then have glary blue light. Keeping away from the blue also has a positive overall effect in keeping the night sky dark. I want to show you some lights over here. The new fixtures that are in Washington Square are the dark sky fixtures. It's actually made the ground very, very well lit but you don't have the glare in your face from the bulbs, and it's almost romantic. You will see some building lighting in Manhattan where the intensity of it could be cut. You'd still enjoy and see the skyline, but that it's, it's brighter than it needs to be. Uh, it's a long process to get people to believe in a reduction of light pollution. While activists and city administrators sketch up plans to return dark skies to bright cities, Irene and others like her will have to contend with finding the ever more elusive dark spots. The dark sites are getting so much harder to find. Everyone's going to suffer from that a bit. I think that's an important part of our heritage as human beings. It's something that we share with 
every other human being that's ever lived. Like everyone's been able to look up and see the stars. And honestly, they haven't changed that much throughout the course of human existence. So we really do share the same night sky and that night sky is, is dwindling. Um, so many people have never seen the Milky Way. They, they don't even know what it is. They don't know that it can be seen. Uh, people who live in large cities don't even know that they can see stars. Uh, they just look up and they see something bright and assume it's a plane. And it's, it's just really unfortunate to be, to be losing that as a society, just flooded with light all the time.